I think it's inevitable that if you have a persuasive, articulate, charismatic man who believes that he's made a very important discovery that challenges scientific orthodoxy, it's inevitable that his students, his colleagues, will have to take a view. Are we for him or against him? And in a way, it becomes quite quickly uh, like the funding of a religion. Uh, you have a charismatic leader who persuades some people who become his followers uh, that they have seen the true light. And uh, there's a large element of that, I fear, in what's happened with Cold Fusion. Well, I, I think that the idea is dead, at least in the form that Pons and Fleischmann gave it currency. It seems to me a phenomenon that happens from time to time in science, where people think they have a spectacular discovery. Uh, they, know, they know that it's no longer as certain as they believed, but they hang on to the delusion that they're right. And um, you know, many other instances like that, where people have been trying to make water run uphill for years after uh, a great discovery without any success at all. Is that, is cold fusion equivalent to trying to make water run uphill? Um, I think so, I think so. In March 1990, cold fusion was written off in an editorial in the science journal, Nature. I think uh, it will turn out that this is just spurious and unconnected with anything that you could call nuclear fusion, thermonuclear fusion. Um, I think that, uh, broadly speaking, it's dead, and it'll remain dead for a long, long time.